वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल ऑफ इकोहोलिक्स इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न फ्यू की पॉइंट अबाउट मॉनिटरिज्म द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज मॉनिटरिज्म सो मॉनिटरिज्म इसेंशियली इज वन ऑफ द इकोनॉमिक स्कूल ऑफ थॉट वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट मॉनिटरिज्म द वन मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पर्सन विच कम्स टू आर माइंड इज मिल्टन फ्रीडमैन so he was the key person under monetarism but what does monetarism has to say so as the name suggest monetarist so monetarist or monetarism is something which is related to money so money is a word which revolves around monetarism so monetarist ideas are also based on the same footprints of the money so monetarism emphasizes the role of monetary authority in controlling the amount of money in circulation for stability and growth now we all know that money has a role to play in the growth of the economy unlike classicals who said that money is just there for transaction purposes for exchange only and there is no role which money has to play while deciding the growth of the economy so monetarist also accept this fact that money has a role to play that is why they say that how much money has to be supply in the economy is one very important decision so that is why the monetary authorities we have basically our central bank it has a very important job to do when they have to control the amount of money supply in our economy right so that's what we have now when the money is going to be supplied in the economy there will be one term which we call as velocity so the exchange the circulation of that money that is velocity so according to monetarist velocity is a generally stable thing which implies what does a uh, stable velocity mean which means that nominal income is largely a function of money supply now how are we coming to this conclusion so we write the equation of exchange in this way m into v is equal to p into y now if the monitor is believe that velocity is constant so whenever this is money supply this is velocity this is prices and this is output of the economy so now whenever there will come a change in money supply either the prices will change or the output will change unlike classicals according to the classicals output was also constant so whenever there was a change in money supply only prices was were changing that was according to classicals but monetary say no the output is not constant output can also fluctuate that is why due to the velocity being stable the changes in the money supply can affect the nominal income also which is the main idea of the monetarist now uh, what i just told you variation in money supply influences national output but in short run very important point to remember because only in the short run according to monetarist the monetary policy the money supply can actually affect the level of output whereas in longer run here also under monetarist the money supply will stop affecting will stop influencing the level of output and it will only affect the price level just like it was doing in the classical model so according to monetarist also if you keep on increasing money supply in the longer run it is just going to bring inflation in the economy so excessive expansion of money supply is inflationary it is going to bring inflation in the economy that is why now the role of central bank is more important because their focus should also be on maintaining the price stability because if they keep on increasing money supply our economy is going to fall into the circle of inflation so maintaining this price stability is really important for the monetary authorities that's that's the idea given by monetarist 
Now let's learn some facts about monetarist. So inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. So as I mentioned that Friedman was a key person, a very prominent person in monetarism. So he also believed that whenever inflation hits the economy, it is always and everywhere. It is because of the monetary factors and not because of the real factors. So that is why it's a mono monetary phenomenon. Now, how does monetarism actually rose? How does monetarism came into existence? So what happened was that Milton Friedman gave restatement of quantity theory of money. Quantity theory of money was given by classicals, but he gave a restatement of it by bringing some changes to that. The equation of exchange we just discussed two minutes ago was only coming from the restatement, was coming from the quantity theory of money. So that was the time where Friedman mentioned that the changes in money supply could affect the output also and that's that was the point monetarism started rising now let's understand it better monetarists also believe that growth of money supply should be based on certain formulations related to economic growth so if we want our growth to be moving in the direction then the money supply should be handled with that certain formulation in our mind. According to monetarist, the Great Depression of 1930 was caused by the massive contraction of money supply. So according to them, only because there was a massive contraction. Contraction means the money supply was falling. That is why the Great Depression was being faced by the worldwide economies. Unlike Keynesian, Keynesian said that Great Depression occurred because the, there was a sharp decline in autonomous investment. So according to Keynesian, actually, the depression or maybe when we are going into surplus situation, that is happening because of changes in autonomous investment demand. Whereas according to monetarist, it was due to the fall in money supply. They also said that the inflation which is followed after the wars, that also happens because during the war, there is a surge, there is a sudden increase in money supply. And after the war is over, the people have to face this inflation. So according to them, inflation will be the effect of the wars whenever we face any war. Now, Milton Friedman, he always supported a free market economy. According to him, the consumption, according to Friedman, the consumption was the function of people's permanent income. Like Keynesian said, consumption will be a function of their nominal income, their present nominal income. Whereas Friedman said that it will be the function of their permanent income. And that's why he also gave permanent income hypothesis for studying the consumption theories. All right. So according to Friedman, whenever we face inflation or whenever there are short run fluctuations in employment or output, the money supply should be tackled to remove all those problems. So if you're facing inflation, money supply has to bring lower down. That's how you do it. So he also promoted the idea of free markets only without the intervention of government, unlike Keynesian. Now, as I mentioned that Friedman said that people's consumption is a function of their permanent income and not the temporary income. So permanent income hypothesis was given by Friedman. So what he talked under permanent income was that the income which is going to be there with them till the long run, that's permanent income. If they're getting a bonus in one month, that's not their permanent income. It's temporary. So they will not change their consumption because they have received bonus in one period. He also predicted the stagflation. All right. So that was about Friedman. Now, because of the quantity theory, the restatement of quantity theory given by Friedman, that 
proved to be an important result for understanding various facts or various results we get under monetarism like the long run monetary neutrality that is in long run the money is going to be neutral it will not affect output but short run monetary non neutrality which means that in short run money supply will affect the output then interest rate flexibility that when the lenders and borrowers know that okay prices are going to change tomorrow they can take that into account and that is why interest rate can move accordingly so that was acceptable under monetarism and the fourth one which is very important is a constant money growth rule so he said that the growth rate of the money should be equal to the growth rate of gdp so that we can maintain the price stability in the economy otherwise the prices will keep on either increasing or decreasing depending on the situation so that's what he has to say now quickly let's understand the difference between monetarist and keynesian monetarist do not allow government for stabilization they say economy can stabilize on its own whereas keynesian says we need government for stabilizing the economy whenever we face some sort of fluctuations they have different perspective on the capacity of economy to find its own equilibrium keynesians accept the use of fiscal policy and monetary policy whereas monetarists only accept monetary policy now monetarism focuses on controlling the money supply to control the economy whereas keynesians focus on government spending to control economy so according to keynesians if the economy has to be brought back on the track fiscal policy is a good tool whereas according to monetarist monetary policy is more beneficial to correct that they don't allow they don't accept the fiscal policy any which way so that's not even an option so there is a very famous quote by friedman which says government failures can be as bad or worse than the market failures which emphasizes that market failure will still be a good market failure will keep the economy in still a good place than the government failure and inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon so technocrats should not only control the economy but they should also control the money supply so that was all about monetarist i hope you will find this video useful please like this video subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comment section the other topics on which you want us to make videos thank you everyone for watching this video